In abstract algebra, a Dedekind domain or Dedekind ring, named after Richard Dedekind, is an integral domain in which every non-zero proper ideal factors into a product of prime ideals. It can be shown that such a factorization is then necessarily unique up to the order of the factors. There are at least three other characterizations of Dedekind domains that are sometimes taken as the definition. See below. A field is a commutative ring in which there are no non-trivial proper ideals, so that any field is a Dedekind domain, however in a rather vacuous way. Some authors add the requirement that a Dedekind domain not be a field. Many more authors state theorems for Dedekind domains with the implicit proviso that they may require trivial modifications for the case of fields. An immediate consequence of the definition is that every principal ideal domain is a Dedekind domain. In fact a Dedekind domain is a unique factorization domain if and only if it is a PID. The prehistory of Dedekind domains. In the 19th century it became a common technique to gain insight into integral solutions of polynomial equations using rings of algebraic numbers of higher degree. For instance, fix a positive integer. In the attempt to determine which integers are represented by the quadratic form, it is natural to factor the quadratic form into the factorization taking place in the ring of integers of the quadratic field. Similarly, for a positive integer the polynomial can be factored over the ring, where is a primitive root of unity. For a few small values of and these rings of algebraic integers are PIDs, and this can be seen as an explanation of the classical successes of Fermat. By this time a procedure for determining whether the ring of all algebraic integers of a given quadratic field is a PID was well known to the quadratic form theorists. Especially, Gauss had looked at the case of imaginary quadratic fields. He found exactly nine values of for which the ring of integers is a PID and conjectured that there are no further values. However, this was understood in the language of equivalence classes of quadratic forms, so that in particular the analogy between quadratic forms and the Fermat equation seems not to have been perceived. In 1847 Gabriel Lamé announced a solution of Fermat's last theorem for all, i.e., that the Fermat equation has no solutions in non-zero integers, but it turned out that his solution hinged on the assumption that the cyclotomic ring is a UFD. Ernst Kummer had shown three years before that this was not the case already for, at the same time, Kummer developed powerful new methods to prove Fermat's last theorem at least for a large class of prime exponents using what we now recognize as the fact that the ring is a Dedekind domain. In fact Kummer worked not with ideals but with ideal numbers, and the modern definition of an ideal was given by Dedekind. By the 20th century, algebraists and number theorists had come to realize that the condition of being a PID is rather delicate, whereas the condition of being a Dedekind domain is quite robust. For instance the ring of ordinary integers is a PID but is seen above the ring of algebraic integers in a number field need not be a PID. In fact, although Gauss also conjectured that there are infinitely many primes such that the ring of integers of is a PID, to this day we do not even know whether there are infinitely many number fields such that is a PID. On the other hand, the ring of integers in a number field is always a Dedekind domain. Another illustration of the delicate, robust dichotomy is the fact that being a Dedekind domain is, among Noetherian domains, a local property, a Noetherian domain is Dedekind IFF for every maximal ideal of the localization is a Dedekind ring, but a local domain is a Dedekind ring IFF it is a PID IFF it is a discrete valuation ring, so the same local characterization cannot hold for PIDs. Rather, one may say that the concept of a Dedekind ring is the globalization of that of a DVR. Alternative definitions For an integral domain that is not a field, all of the following conditions are equivalent. Every non-zero proper ideal factors into primes. 
is noetherian, and the localization at each maximal ideal is a discrete valuation ring. Every non-zero fractional ideal of is invertible, is an integrally closed, noetherian domain with Krull dimension 1. Thus a Dedekind domain is a domain that satisfies anyone, and hence all four, are through. Which of these conditions one takes as the definition is therefore merely a matter of taste. In practice, it is often easiest to verify. A Krull domain is a higher dimensional analog of a Dedekind domain. A Dedekind domain that is not a field is a Krull domain of dimension 1. This notion can be used to study the various characterizations of a Dedekind domain. In fact, this is the definition of a Dedekind domain used in Boerbeke's commutative algebra. A Dedekind domain can also be characterized in terms of homological algebra. An integral domain is a Dedekind domain if and only if it is a hereditary ring, i.e., every submodule of a projective module over it is projective. Similarly, an integral domain is a Dedekind domain if and only if every divisible module over it is injective. Some examples of Dedekind domains. All principal ideal domains and therefore all discrete valuation rings are Dedekind domains. The ring of algebraic integers in a number field K is no Ethereum, integrally closed, and of dimension 1, so by R is a Dedekind domain. As above, this includes all the examples considered by Kummer and Dedekind and was the motivating case for the general definition, and these remain among the most studied examples. The other class of Dedekind rings that is arguably of equal importance comes from geometry. Let C be a non-singular geometrically integral affine algebraic curve over a field K. Then the coordinate ring K C of regular functions on C is a Dedekind domain. Indeed, this is essentially an algebraic translation of these geometric terms. The coordinate ring of any affine variety is, by definition, a finitely generated K-algebra. So no Ethereum, moreover curve means dimension 1 and non-singular implies normal, which by definition means integrally closed. Both of these constructions can be viewed as special cases of the following basic result. Theorem. Let R be a Dedekind domain with fraction field K. Let L be a finite degree field extension of K and denote by S the integral closure of R in L. Then S is itself a Dedekind domain. Applying this theorem when R is itself a PID gives us a way of building Dedekind domains out of PIDs. Taking R equals Z this construction tells us precisely that rings of integers of number field to Dedekind domains. Taking R equals K T gives us the above case of non-singular affine curves. Zariski and Samuel were sufficiently taken by this construction to pose as a question whether every Dedekind domain arises in such a fashion, i.e., by starting with a PID and taking the integral closure in a finite degree field extension, a surprisingly simple negative answer was given by L. Claborn. If the situation is as above but the extension L of K is algebraic of infinite degree, then it is still possible for the integral closure S of R in L to be a Dedekind domain, but it is not guaranteed. For example, take again R equals Z, K equals Q and now take L to be the field of all algebraic numbers. The integral closure is nothing else than the ring of all algebraic integers. Since the square root of an algebraic integer is again an algebraic integer, it is not possible to factor any non-zero non-unit algebraic integer into a finite product of irreducible elements which implies that is not no Ethereum. In general, the integral closure of a Dedekind domain in an infinite algebraic extension is a proof of domain. It turns out that the ring of algebraic integers is slightly more special than this. It is a Bezout domain. Fractional ideals in the class group. Let R be an integral domain with fraction field K. A fractional ideal is a non-zero R submodule I of K for which there exists a non-zero X in K such that given two fractional ideals I and J, one defines their product IJ as the set of all finite sums. 
The product ij is again a fractional ideal. The set frac of all fractional ideals endowed with the above product is a commutative semi-group and in fact immanoid. The identity element is the fractional ideal R. For any fractional ideal I, one may define the fractional ideal one then tautologically has. In fact one has a quality if and only if I, as an element of the monoid of frac, is invertible. In other words, if I has any inverse, then the inverse must be. A principal fractional ideal is one of the form for some non-zero x in k. Note that each principal fractional ideal is invertible, the inverse of being simply. We denote the subgroup of principal fractional ideals by prin. A domain R is a PID if and only if every fractional ideal is principal. In this case, we have frac equals prin equals, since two principal fractional ideals and are equal IFF is a unit in R. For a general domain R, it is meaningful to take the quotient of the monoid frac of all fractional ideals by the submonoid prin of principal fractional ideals. However this quotient itself is generally only a monoid. In fact it is easy to see that the class of a fractional ideal I in frac prin is invertible if and only if I itself is invertible. Now we can appreciate, in a Dedekind domain, and only in a Dedekind domain, is every fractional ideal invertible. Thus these are precisely the class of domains for which frac prin forms a group, the ideal class group CL of R. This group is trivial if and only if R is a PID, so can be viewed as quantifying the obstruction to a general Dedekind domain being a PID. We note that for an arbitrary domain one may define the Picard group PIC as the group of invertible fractional ideals INV modulo the subgroup of principal fractional ideals. For a Dedekind domain this is of course the same as the ideal class group. However, on a more general class of domains, including Noetherian domains and Krull domains, the ideal class group is constructed in a different way, and there is a canonical homomorphism PIC CL which is however generally neither injective nor surjective. This is an affine analogue of the distinction between Cartier divisors and Weyl divisors on a singular algebraic variety, a remarkable theorem of L. Claborn asserts that for any abelian group G whatsoever, there exists a Dedekind domain R whose ideal class group is isomorphic to G. Later, C.R. Liedem Green showed that such an R may construct it as the integral closure of a PID in a quadratic field extension. In 1976, Rosen showed how to realize any countable abelian group as the class group of a Dedekind domain that is a subring of the rational function field of an elliptic curve, and conjectured that such an elliptic construction should be possible for a general abelian group. Rosen's conjecture was proven in 2008 by P. L. Clark. In contrast, one of the basic theorems in algebraic number theory asserts that the class group of the ring of integers of a number field is finite, its cardinality is called the class number and it is an important and rather mysterious invariant. Notwithstanding the hard work of many leading mathematicians from Gauss to the present day, finitely generated modules over a Dedekind domain. In view of the well-known and exceedingly useful structural theorem for finitely generated modules over a principal ideal domain, it is natural to ask for a corresponding theory for finitely generated modules over a Dedekind domain. Let us briefly recall the structural theory in the case of a finitely generated module over a PID. We define the torsion submodule to be the set of elements of such that for some non-zero in, then, can be decomposed into a direct sum of cyclic torsion modules, each of the form for some non-zero ideal of, by the Chinese remainder theorem, each can further be decomposed into a direct sum of submodules of the form, where is a power of a prime ideal. This decomposition need not be unique, but any two decompositions differ only in the order of the factors. The torsion submodule is a direct summand, i.e., there exists a complementary submodule of such that, 
Isomorphic to for a uniquely determined non-negative integer, in particular, is a finitely generated free module. Now let be a finitely generated module over an arbitrary Dedekind domain, then and hold verbatim. However, it follows from that a finitely generated torsion module over a PID is free. In particular, it asserts that all fractional ideals are principal, a statement that is false whenever is not a PID. In other words, the non-triviality of the class group CL causes to fail, remarkably. The additional structure in torsion finitely generated modules over an arbitrary Dedekind domain is precisely controlled by the class group, as we now explain. Over an arbitrary Dedekind domain 1 has is isomorphic to a direct sum of rank 1 projective modules. Moreover, for any rank 1 projective modules, one has if and only if and rank 1 projective modules can be identified with fractional ideals. And the last condition can be rephrased as thus a finitely generated torsion module of rank can be expressed as where is a rank 1 projective module. The Steinitz class for P over R is the class of in CL. It is uniquely determined. A consequence of this is theorem. Let R be a Dedekind domain. Then, where K0 is the graph and group of the commutative monoid of finitely generated projective R modules. These results were established by Ernst Steinitz in 1912. An additional consequence of this structure, which is not implicit in the preceding theorem, is that if the two projective modules over a Dedekind domain have the same class in the groth nd group, then they are in fact abstractly isomorphic, locally Dedekind rings. There exist integral domains that are locally but not globally Dedekind. The localization of it each maximal ideal is a Dedekind ring but itself is not Dedekind. As mentioned above, such a ring cannot be Noetherian. It seems that the first examples of such rings were constructed by N. Nekano in 1953.